and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is the Knights of the Sound Table. Thank you for joining us. If you like the content, please make sure you hit the subscribe button above and join us. Tonight we have Darius Lewis. How are you doing, Mr. Lewis? I am blessed. I am blessed. 100. Okay, and, and, and Mr. Lee, how are you doing? We have Lee as well. Lee is doing absolutely wonderful. Okay, great. And we also have host of the New Lease on Life podcast can be heard on any media format. We have Lisa. How are you? I'm honored and privileged to be here with you gentlemen. Well, thank you for calling me and Darius gentlemen. Um, Even <laughs> late. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, man. man, you know I got a kid with Lee. You know I got a kid with Lee. Um, I'm doing well as well as, as well also because I've never asked how I'm actually doing. Lee's actually done it once, so bravo, Lee. But I'm more blessed than any damn body. What do you think about that, Darius? <laughs> <laughs> um, tonight's topic is um, just weird foods or foods that I might find weird myself. Um, you guys might all you guys might all know that this company called uh, what's called Meat and Beyond or Beyond Meat. Beyond they had Meat. Uh, Impossible Whopper. What, like about six, seven months ago? I guess it was like kind of popular amongst people. People are in the, the vegan society type of lifestyle. Well, now it's been announced that they're actually going to uh, they're going to do a KFC spinoff of it as well, to where you can go get you a twelve piece of some uh, meatless chicken. So. What, did you see, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Is that something that you would try? Has you guys actually tried to plant-based meats, anybody? And does it taste the same? And would you try the KFC product when it comes out? I have tried the Beyond Meat burger and Italian sausage. Totally different from Impossible. Um, the Beyond Meat burger and the Italian sausage, to me, the Italian sausage, I could not tell the difference. The burger, they put some beet juice or something in it to give it that red color. And that's, that's honestly, slurry. It, it tasted pretty good to me. And this was the Impossible Whopper? No, this was the Beyond Meat burger. Okay, the Impossible what um, I bought the meat from uh, Target. Oh, okay, like, I got you. So, so it was like a pound of meat that you bought somewhere. It was okay. four patties for like eight bucks. Okay, that, that's pricey for four patties. Damn. Um, Lisa, you said you've tried the Impossible Whopper before? I did. And it, I mean, and you know, my family's all ranchers and farmers. So, I mean, beef is all we grew up with. And I, I don't know that I would have been able to tell that the plant-based Whopper and the original one. Okay, so, I mean, it really tastes that close. So it's something that if you put a Whopper in front of me and put the Impossible Whopper right next to it and I took a bite out of each yolk, you wouldn't be 100% sure if I'd be able to tell the difference? Yeah, I, as long as, I mean, I think if you looked at the texture, if you looked at it, you'd be able to tell, but I don't, taste-wise, I don't think you'd be able to. Okay. Um, Darius, have you tried the Impossible Whopper or anything like that that's like a plant-based meat product? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no interest whatsoever. No, not really. Um, if, if nah, <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> no, I think I would be willing to give it a try, but it just seems like I don't know. And the, uh, I mean, what's your guys' thoughts on the chicken? I mean. That to me is just like really, really bizarre. I don't know how you could come up with a, like an 11 herbs and spices of a, a meatless plant-based product at KFC and make it taste like the kernel. I mean, what's your thoughts, Lee? Well, I'm pretty sure y'all, like myself, grew up on fried chicken. No, not, and, until, uh, recent, not until recently and stuff. I've had my first piece of chicken like about a year ago. It's, it's pretty tasty. Yeah, okay. But anyway, <laughs> no, I, I don't think I would want to, no, I, no, <laughs> I wouldn't want to try it. 
Is it because it doesn't have the bone in it, or does that have anything to do with it? And I think you might be on to something, Troy, because we, you know, I grew up eating fried chicken drumsticks, <laughs> long and sucking the bone, and actually breaking the bone apart to eat the marrow out of it. So, yeah, that yeah. might have a lot to do with it. What if what if they put like a like plastic pieces, like reminiscent of looking like bones, with the chicken slurry wrapped around it? Well, I couldn't be, I couldn't now because I know it's fake chicken. <laughs> well, that's true too. That's true too. And I, I guess putting inserting plastic into it kind of defeat the purpose and stuff. And who's or to say that that meat ain't plastic that they actually selling as plant based? So no, I mean we don't know. I mean it would be interesting. Uh, you guys remember when uh, Mr. Rogers would take us like on these great ass tours and stuff of factories and shit. You know, when we were kids, you could watch a TV show, take around a tour of how they make uh, frozen pizzas and Crayola crayons and all that shit. That would be kind of a nice damn trip to go check out, check them out uh, making fake meat and chicken and shit, wouldn't it? Or would it be disturbing? What's your thoughts on that? Be, it would be disturbing because if you've mm -hmm. ever seen regular hamburger meat made, you, I mean, I didn't eat hamburger meat for a while after I saw it being made. I don't know. I think you could put me up in the window and stuff right across the whole area, and I'd probably still be eating my burger and steak. No. Steak is one thing, but burger, hamburger meat is a whole different. What's the, what's the process? What's the process on hamburger? Because you used to work in the, um, that type of industry. So what is the process yeah. of uh, ground beef? It's pretty much all the leftovers go in it. I mean, it, it you know, all the fat that's trimmed off of the, um, you know, like when they're, when they're cutting it into steaks and stuff like that, all the fat's fat that's trimmed goes into a grinder and then it gets blended and then there's some water and some additive. It's just not appealing. It just is not, it's disgusting. Well, I mean, obviously better. it didn't, it didn't break me from eating hamburger meat for the rest of my life, but there was a period of time where I was like, yeah, no, thanks. Well, no, I mean, that was, I guess that's, that kind of like wiped out my theory. How I, was, I had like a real creative complex thing going on in my head and how brown beef was made. I won't share on the show, but it involved like conveyor, which was like a whole, just a bunch of animals, just, uh -huh, uh, just you know, all over the place going into a conveyor and just, uh, and that's it. You know, that's kind of what I thought it would be, you know, and then a tube of, a tube of hamburger meat come out at the end. Um, what's your thoughts on that, Lee? Uh, would you be interested in how the meat was, the, um, the fake meat is produced? Uh, no, because if it's produced anyway, like I watched this documentary called Food Inc. And I got to see some very disturbing stuff where I'm mindful now of what I actually consume as far as meat. And I really don't eat much meat. Now, I am a steak lover, but I limit that to like once on the weekend, you know, something like that, two or three yeah. times a month, if so. Um, and every now and again, I like a chicken wing, my chicken wing. So... But well, naturally, I mean, it's in your DNA to like it. <laughs> but no, I, yeah, I couldn't watch it because it'll really, it'll turn your stomach. I'm sure it will. Just like regular meat. Well, did you see the Super Size Me documentary when they showed how the chicken nuggets and stuff were made where they find like the, the, the lowest form of chicken they could possibly have <laughs> to make yeah, the oh, nuggets? Oh, yeah. I, I used to work for Nestle Purina and they get these big frozen chicken loaves and it looked like the same thing that they use for their McDonald's McNuggets. The only difference is what Nestle uses is spray is like an X on it, red X, and it's charcoal, meaning it's not for human consumption, but it's the same chicken. That sounds a little, that sounds a little wishy-washy, man. I'm just <laughs> <You saying. know>. <laughs> 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 be messed up. I just like whipped out a chicken nugget right now to start eating. Oh well, <laughs> you know. But I will say though, my kids, when they were younger, my two oldest, Carissa and Caleb, when we sat and watched that Super Size Me uh, documentary. They did not want McDonald's for a good year. Neither one of them. You know, we we'd be sitting there driving. I'm like, what do you guys want to eat and stuff? I don't care. I was just not McDonald's. And like, they'd be like, well, what about Burger? I'm like, well, you know, Burger is probably doing the same stuff with their stuff. I don't want Burger King either. Let's go. Let's just go home and make something, Dad. Right. <laughs> you know, so it was good. It was a good life for a little while. Um, would you be interested in seeing how this meat is uh, produced, or lack thereof, fake meat, Darius? 
No, no. I actually, it would kind of piss me off. <laughs> um, you know, because like if seeing that and then them getting ready to serve that to you, yeah, I would be pissed off. So, no, nah, I, I don't want to see that. I'd rather not know. <laughs> What, you don't want to see that chicken with that abnormal big-ass head that came lift his head up like walking around, <laughs> walking around like this and shit? <laughs> Being grinded up and stuff into a, a nugget. You don't want to see that? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, well, I just wonder. I mean, uh, uh, Lisa, would you Would you like to see that that, that chicken just running around? Bah, 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 head, big-ass head, can't even lift it up. Being loaded up. McDonald's nuggets. No, I, I I never want to go to a chicken plant. I've I know all the ins and out of a beef plant, and I that was that was fine. That was enough. I, I don't ever want to go to another one. Well, what about Chick Fil A? And stuff? they're so damn polite. I bet you they say sorry and they're polite. You know, to each chicken they enter in at their production plant, they probably tell them it's been my pleasure and all that stuff. I mean, they got great customer service. Well, you'd be surprised at some of the rituals that have to take place depending on who your customer is in those processing plants. Like if, you're, if your customer happens to be um, kosher, then there has, to, there has to be these kosher blessings and different kinds of um, r like processes for that particular customer. So because the materials that they use for from the beginning to the end have to all be fall under that, that kosher category. So. Wow. So, so there's way more to it than just see like a specific seasoning choice by a specific restaurant. Yeah. So like I've seen it where it was a customer was from a foreign country that had specific religious rituals before a sacrifice, if you will. So they had to play these, this music that was like a, considered a blessing of that particular animal that was go going to be slaughtered to go through the process. So the music was playing over the loudspeaker as that customer's product was being produced. What kind of song? Like the Fonty it's Chicken? Probably, it's probably yeah. Ron Isley. It was probably Ron Isley. You know, I, you know, I think it was. Place, I think it was Ron Isley blessing the cows. Yeah. I think no, no, rumor, rumor has it. Rumor has it. I don't know if you're familiar with this, Lisa or Lee, but um, back in the 70s, um, Ron Isley and Michael McDonald, they were working on a, uh, working on a, an album together. And it was supposed to be, the album was designed for, you know, like you were talking about specific restaurants and, and places and getting their food blessed. They were creating a whole album just dedicated to that. And I guess it just didn't, it didn't end up taking off, you know, like it should have because um, Michael McDonald was drinking a Coke and Ron Isley snatched the Coke out of his hand and he had a Chicken McNugget and he had Chicken McNugget crumb all over his face and he left it, he left it on set can, which pissed Michael McDonald off. They haven't spoke since. Yeah, Ron Isley had too much, uh, there was too much Lowry seasoning on it, so. <laughs> and then Michael McDonald was like, the seasoning for my lips, all the Lowry. <laughs> I hope yeah. Ryan's not watching. He's probably doing research on this right now. Did that really happen? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that, Lisa. Brian's like our tech person doing research and stuff on doing fact checks on everything that we say on the show. Actually, I do know that because I've watched all the episodes. See? That's what I'm talking about. And, and flick, you guys. Flick that her. Flick that say. her. Huh? I said flick that her. Hey, there you go. There you go. <laughs> we got we to gotta, we gotta slow clap that in. Okay. See? Just let you slow <laughs> Yep, and Lisa. Lisa, she gets the award this evening. She is now officially the cream of the crop. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Mr. Okerlin. It's like my three-year-old niece told me this morning, I'm the queen of the world. Oh, that's nice. Oh. That's nice. Okay, Lee's gonna... That's a funny kid. Yeah, Lee had that type of, like, oh, like he's getting ready to say some shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. 
I know that's why I took a drink of water because I was preparing myself <laughs> for my comeback. There's there no, that was just an all. That's it. <laughs> Well, it was really, really a great time having all of you guys on the show this evening. Um, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you for supporting and listening to the show as well. And if you do like the content, do not hesitate to hit that subscribe button right above my head right now. It has like a fancy sound effect on ding, 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 and all that shit. Click that damn thing and join us. What the hell wrong with you? Be somebody. Got any close closing words, uh, Lisa? Hit the subscribe button, support my guys, and wear your mask. Wear your mask. Wear your mask in I'm public. To, I was trying to give you the volley so you could give me another volley so I get ready to spike that. Damn it. Well, I, I mean, just so everybody knows, it now has come way closer into my inner circle than I ever thought it would. So that's why I say to everybody, wear your mask. Oh, no. I, I, you know what? And I'm actually in the same boat with you and stuff because I can definitely, well, you know I can relate as well and stuff. So if you want to wear, I mean, I say wear your mask. If you don't want to wear your mask, that's fine and stuff because I wouldn't want to impede on your freedoms or anything and stuff, you know, you know, especially when some other people and stuff didn't even pick what water fountain they could drink out of or you know, get attacked by wild dogs, water fountains, can't eat at specific restaurants. So, but I'm sorry about your freedoms about having to wear a mask. I'm also sorry, you know the wrestler Kane? And we know wrestling's fake, but Kane wrestling a mask for over an hour, Royal Rumble, 1995. You complain about wearing a mask for 11 minutes going to Aldi's. <laughs> oh, <man>. But still. <laughs> no, wear your mask. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just, I mean, I, I, I totally agree. Lee, what you got? Yeah, I, I agree. Whether you agree with what's going on as far as the reality of uh, the COVID virus, you know, try to protect yourself and others. I mean, just be mindful and be empathetic. Any final words for you, Darius? <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, uh, I, I agree with you guys, you know, um, be mindful of others. And um, <laughs> what's I'm, funny, Darius? I'm, I'm just going to end it on uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, famous words get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> get to the chopper. Uh. And I'd like to say this episode has been sponsored by the fine loving people, the everlasting Jewy Cop Scott Stopper. Still waiting on the chat. <laughs>